Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. I'm Megan Wright. I'm here from IdeaScale and I'm here with Augusto and Jessica who will be presenting how ACF innovates. We're excited to get started here in just a moment, but while we wait one more minute for everyone to join, can everyone send in the chat where they're joining us from today? I'm here in Washington, D.C. And Augusto and Jessica, where are you joining us from today? And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, super excited to be here. I'm joining from Bethesda, Maryland, not far from Washington, D.C. I am joining from Phoenix, Arizona. Pretty far from DC. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar with Augusto Kangawala and Jessica Dewaran. We've got a great presentation lined up for you today, and I'm happy to hand things over to our speakers here shortly. So first, let's go over some basics. The webinar is one hour long, and that includes an audience Q&A at the end. So to submit a question, please use the Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen. And to share your thoughts and insights, please use the chat functionality to the left of the Q&A. This presentation will be recorded and everyone will receive it via email shortly after. Before we get started, I'd like to briefly go over who IdeaScale is and what we do. We're an idea management solution that empowers government to harness the power of crowdsourcing to drive innovation. We are government industry leaders and we're the only FedRAMP certified idea management platform. We were actually established as a White House initiative and we've been helping government organizations innovate for almost 15 years now. And if you are interested in networking with top government innovation leaders, we're excited to share that we will be hosting the 2024 Government Innovation Summit next month, October 30th in Washington, DC. And if you're not in DC, we do have a virtual attendance option as well. And we'll share that link to register at the end of the webinar. All right, now I'd like to introduce our speakers, Augusto and Jessica. Augusto is an award-winning innovator in human-centered design and a recipient of the Forum IT 100 Award for 2024. Congratulations, Augusto. And Jessica is a program support specialist at ACF, where she works to drive creative and transformative solutions, including the ACF Innovation Challenge and the development of an improved grants management experience. All right, and I'll go ahead and pass things over to them. Thank you, Megan. So I'm gonna take a second here to share my screen. Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Augusto Kangawala, and I'm the CX Program Manager for ACF. I'm here with my colleague, Jessica, to talk about, uh, uh, specifically about the Innovation Challenge, the story of the Innovation Challenge, but particularly why is it important in the way the ACF innovates. And we're here to share some of our experiences in the past year and also how uh, to share also how IdeaScale enable us to pull off the challenge with uh, very little time and, and resources, uh, which I'm sure some, some of you can relate to. So um, excuse me one second, go here. Before we go into dive deeper into the innovation challenge, we're gonna uh, have uh, my colleague Jessica take us through an exercise to share more about, uh, to, to, to test how much you know about ACF. So Jessica. Yeah, um, kind of just to get you guys this background and test how well you know the administration for children and families and our programs. Uh, we're gonna have some polls posted in the chat and give you guys a couple of minutes to test your knowledge. Too bad I cannot participate in this uh, in this uh, pop quiz because I I don't know all the answers uh, top of my head, but I'm I'm learning quite a bit from just reading through them. So 
Thanks for putting this together, Jessica. This is so, so informational. It's great to see all the numbers rolling in. Great participation. All right. I think we are good to go ahead and start reviewing our answers. So um, for question number one, how well do you know um, which ACF program was launched in 1965 as part of Lyndon B. Johnson's War on Poverty and focuses on early childhood education for low-income families. That was Head Start, which was part of the War on Poverty initiative. We move into our next question, true or false. TANF stands for Temporary Assistance for Needy Families and is focused solely on financial support without employment or work-related requirements. That answer is going to be false. TANF includes work-related requirements aimed at promoting self-sufficiency. Our next question is, which ACF program ensures that children who cannot live with their families are placed in safe, supportive environments and works to reunify them with families when possible? And that's going to be foster care. Our foster care programs support keeping families together and promoting kinship care, which basically just has other family members care for children if removed rather than returning into the foster care system at, like in general. Our next question is true or false. The Low Income Energy Assistance Program, better known as LIHEAP, helps low-income families pay for heating and cooling costs. And this is true. LIHEAP provides assistance with energy costs to low-income households. Our next question goes over which ACF program supports survivors of domestic violence by providing shelters, legal assistance, and supportive services, and that is the Family Violence Prevention and Services Program. This program funds services and support for survivors of domestic violence. Next, we have true or false. The Office of Refugee Resettlements assists newly arrived refugees with basic needs such as housing, employment, and health care. And that is true. The Office of Refugee Resettlement provides resources to help refugees adjust to life in the United States. And to round it out, how many programs does ACF administer with an annual budget of more than $70 billion? And that is 60 programs. ACF administers over 60 programs with an annual budget exceeding $70 billion. I believe it's around $73 billion. And I will send it back to Augusto so he can tell you more about ACF and our team. Wow, thank you, Jessica. That was super, super informative. Yeah, as you can see, ACF missions, uh, as I said, is super important, and uh, it really uh, makes a it makes it super inspiring to work for this agency. Uh, it's motivating, uh, and definitely the mission. It's 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 important, and we're we're proud to be here uh, sharing it with you all today, especially in the way we innovate. So, just to to uh, summarize the administration for children and families. Uh, it's a division of the U.S. Uh, and uh, the, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and promotes the economic and social well-being of families, children, youth, individuals, and communities, with funding, strategic partnership, guidance, training, and technical assistance. Technical assistance in the way of customer service, basically for our grant recipients, also organizations that we partner with, state and local governments, uh, uh, tribal partners, etc. As you heard during the, the rice breaker, we found we fund some of the most crucial social programs in our country, making the mission of the AC agency uh, very, very important. We are the human services part of the uh, HHS family. Now let's dive into a little bit of what, who we are and what we do. Uh, so I mentioned the ACF is a um, grant managing organization. We fund a lot of social programs, but we have five strategic goals at the agency that range from uh, advancing equity, uh, helping uh, ensuring child, youth, and individuals' well-being, uh, support for communities and families with acute needs. But we're going to focus on the specific on strategic goal number five, which is the one that uh, gave uh, you know room for the creation of the innovation challenge. So strategic goal number five it says that it is to enable and promote innovation. Uh, within ACF to improve the lives of children, youth, families, and individuals. 
keyword innovation, right? So we have to promote innovation and the agency was inspired by the, uh, when I talk about now the innovation challenge, uh, this is, as I mentioned, it aligns with strategic goal number five. And it was inspired uh, by another innovation effort at HHS, but uh, the ACF, uh, what, it, with the difference that ACF is a learning opportunity open to all ACF staff and contractors uh, for them to share their ideas on how to creatively solve problems within the agency. We use idea scale for staff to submit their ideas, join teams and vote to watch their favorite ideas move on to the top. Top ideas are sent to panel judges, a panel of judges who decide which ideas move on to the innovation accelerator. So to give you another, another over, uh, overview of the challenge itself, it has several phases, but starts with an idea submission, which happens in idea scale, and which we're super grateful for, and it allows us to really seamlessly conduct this, this portion of the challenge. Uh, then we also go into teams of sub, uh, team formation. Once ideas are submitted, the teams form in a, within idea scale, so anyone can join from the staff and contractors. Uh, then we go into community voting, which also happens at the platform. Uh, seamlessly, people can go, uh, uh, hype up their, their their favorite ideas and vote for their favorite ones, uh, giving them moving them up to the top. Uh, then we could go into panel voting, which also happens in the platform. Uh, after the panel votes and selects the top ideas, they move into the um, human centered design and accelerator uh, bootcamp. Uh, that's a, that's the, the accelerator um, human centered design bootcamp happens right after the ideas are selected. And then for 12 weeks, the ideas move into what we call a 12 week innovator, innovator accelerator. Uh, and the whole uh, challenge finalizes with a innovation summit week and innovation date, which I'm gonna refer to as uh, explaining it later. So to get things started, we kick, we kick, uh, we kick the accelerator, uh, the innovators challenge with a kickoff session where attendees have the opportunity to network with other innovators across ACF and learn more about the challenge. So in preparation for kind of thinking about the ideas and learning more about the details of the challenge, which will happen in a, a few weeks down the road. But we start with the kickoff just to get folks kind of thinking about the challenge. And for this year, we have some surprises planned for them and some partnerships that are that's, that's, uh, that are really excited. Uh, really exciting, sorry. How did, we, how did we land on the challenge? Well, well, the agency was inspired by the HHS incubator, which is more like a Shark Tank style competition for ideas at HHS. So ACF participated, they sent some teams to participate of that, of that uh, HHS wide event. And we learned some things, uh, primarily that we wanted to do something similar at ACF with the difference that we did not have the you know, prices or, or, or certain incentives that uh, HHS might have for participants and teams. So we were so we were focusing on the learning opportunity to learn human centered design and spread a innovation across ACF. So in 22, the agency conducted a pilot. Unfortunately, a lot of the people that were that, that run the pilot left the agency and we uh, inherited a challenge basically um, and we had to start from scratch. So we didn't have a lot of materials or guidance on how they conducted the challenge or why they follow certain uh, certain patterns or, or decided for, um, for certain activities versus others. So we had to go back and pretty much start from scratch. Uh, we just knew that the agency was excited about having an innovation challenge become a permanent feature of, the, of our events calendar and we had to make it happen. So we decided to go back and talk to people that had been part of the challenge because we didn't have access to the people that run the challenge. So we, for the 2023, uh, we, we conducted, um, we talked to folks, uh, we basically engaged with all stakeholders across, across, the, across ACF. So we talked to previous participants, coaches, instructors, and our senior staff. So we talked to uh, all these different groups of folks and try to put together the pieces of what the challenge, what how the challenge went, kind of what uh, what went what went well, what could be improved, and we took those lessons into the 2023 challenge. That we're gonna now go into kind of how, what happened with that. So as I mentioned before, we collected feedback. We we talked to all participants. We conducted interviews. We conducted direct interviews. We send out invitations for them to come and join us in our in our focus groups. So combining those two those two methods, we listen to all the feedback that we could from previous participants and from leadership and from coaches. Uh, 
and we uh, we kind of learn kind of the things as I mentioned that went well and that could be improved. Among those things that we learned uh, were three main components that people were sort of uh, that think they could improve, which it was number one the visibility of the challenge, number one number two the way they communicate uh, they communicated to the agency about the challenge, and also kind of the follow up to the to the uh, to the ideas and what happens after post challenge communication and and activities. So those were the main three things that people were concerned about in going into a new challenge, right? Or maybe would uh, uh, kind of like discourage them from participating again because those three things uh, they did not uh, satisfy them, so to speak, during the 2020, uh, 22 pilot. So we took all those lessons and we started thinking, how can we address all those uh, sort of like concerns or, or feedback in a way that is created creatively? but doesn't necessarily, uh, without having a budget that we can resort to and offer like maybe incentives to teams or, or other things. So, so we, we, we decided to, to create, started with um, engage, uh, that some of the ideas that were presented in the, in the previous year were uh, basically open to any, any type of idea that, that people wanted to submit. So the challenge was very, very open in that regard but that created a um, sort of like a, a a wide variety of ideas that were not necessarily aligned with the ACF's goals and objectives. So in some cases, the ideas were not necessarily attractive to especially leadership uh, because they saw those ideas as very removed from the actual mission and they thought, yeah, it's it's so nice that they go and learn uh, human-centered design, but how is that going to benefit the agency? Uh, I, I cannot see the correlation. So that number one, we decided to create themes uh, those themes would make sure that the, the 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 ideas that were submitted had to align with one of those three themes that were on at the same time aligned with the strategic goals and objectives for the agency. So by creating that, every idea pretty much that was submitted was sort of in, uh, embedded or relevant to those to the mission of the agency, right? So it would support the mission of the agency at the end, and that helped us create more uh, more not just more more visibility but more interest among everyone that was involved in the challenge. Number two, uh, we wanted to create a connection with uh, leadership, uh, especially during, before, during, and after the challenge. And we achieved that by engaging them in the selection of the themes. And we'll talk, I'm gonna talk about more about it uh, when we talk about a uh, very important part, which is leadership engagement, uh, creatively, creative leadership engagement. So uh, they helped us uh, engage, we engaged it from the beginning, from this moment that we talked about the challenge and selection of ideas. So they were very much embedded in that. And then also we have a brand new uh, platform idea scale that we're launching and the simplify the idea submission, the team formation, the voting, the communications and every aspect. So it really enabled us to, to seamlessly provide a lot of these, address a lot of these issues within the, own, within the platform to all participants. So that was, that was wonderful to have. As you all know, IdeaScale is an incredible platform to crowdsource. So it allows us, it was embedded into our, into our system, provide a single sign-on capability. So anybody could just with, a, with authentication, of, you know, uh, authorization for our system could easily, uh, even people outside as well, but primarily people from HHS could easily go into the platform and, and participate in the challenge. So it was pretty much open to everyone with an HACF email address, which was wonderful and it was seamless. So no need to use a name and password. I mean, uh, it was just directly embedded into, the, into, our, into, our, into our environment. So anybody could participate. So making it super, super easy. Um, then allowed us to provide us with a wonderful landing page where we could put all the instructions and, and, and information important for participants within the on the front page as soon as people log in they got all the details information video it was it was wonderful people really love that and learned a lot from that making things easier for us to in terms of like educating people across, uh, about the platform the pretty much the platform uh explained itself it had everything built in uh then we were able to form teams within the platform allowed us to vote seamlessly and also collect votes, select the winners and all that stuff within the platform. So that was really nice to have and make, this, uh, make that part of the portion of the challenge super easy. Next, we uh, now let's go into the accelerator. Once the ideas were submitted, once the teams were selected, then we had to move on to the accelerator portion of the challenge. And this is where we uh, uh, listened to what happened the, the previous year. We, we implemented more frequent check-ins between teams 
coaches and participants. We realized or we learned from, from our feedback sessions that participants felt like uh, there was a lot of space in between uh, checking uh, basically the, the end of the bootcamp and presentations. Basically, they, were on their, they felt like they were on their own for about 11 to 12 weeks. Uh, instead, we implemented uh, open office hours. Uh, we implemented uh, mandatory and non-mandatory check-ins within with teams. Uh, also, we learned that the coaches needed coaching or kind of like to build a community. So the coaches, uh, we implemented a, 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 a space for coaches to come together, share practices, frustrations, uh, victories with all the other coaches. And that proved to be super effective at uh, creating a community uh, within the coaches. So they also very, very pleased with that. And finally, uh, you know, like I said, we checked in with participants. So we had not just uh, your mandatory uh, check-ins, but also the, the optionals and they were well attended and well received. Finally, after the 12 weeks accelerator where all the teams completed, not just the bootcamp and they had to work on their, uh, on their projects, uh, come up with ideas, refine their ideas, pilot, you know, prototype, et cetera. And they were ready for to for showtime. We gave them something else that were, they were they were looking for is they now that they were getting more attention because the the communications that Jessica will mention in a second gave us a lot more visibility in for the agency and with leadership. Uh, now the teams were gonna get way more attention, so they had to be prepared for the for the time to shine, right? So we provided them with specific presentation guidance. Uh, we offer offer offered them. Uh, tons of opportunities for feedback during sessions and coaching on presenting ideas or Shark Tank style uh, pitch, pitches, right? So, so those were something new that we implemented this year and they've proven super effective because we heard later from other uh, participants and leadership that the team seemed super polished, super prepared and the ideas, they were able to like, sell the ideas uh, like, um, like really well and, and that translated into really good outcomes that I want to talk about it in, in, a, in a few minutes. But yes, yeah, so... Uh, we implemented that uh, as a as a new new thing, new feature in 2023, and and really deliver great results for everyone. Finally, the need to be seen and to be heard. We try to address that by not just having everybody. Imagine 12 teams presenting in in short, you know, you know, short presentations throughout, you know, I don't know, two hours uh, or so. Uh, it was very difficult to ask people to stay for that long uh, to come and, and listen to all the sessions or, or all the presentations. So what we what we came up with was a, 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 what we call innovation summit day. So throughout the course of a week, we split the groups. We still the all the teams into small groups and virtual settings, and we allow them for opportunity to provide longer presentations about their ideas. And but most importantly, we allow the opportunity for the community for ACF community to come and meet the, the teams and have conversations with them in breakout sessions. That was the most effective and well-received probably feature of, of the entire challenge. The teams were so delighted to hear or see the amount of engagement, the amount of interest that, that these, uh, these sessions had. They were, they were able to explain their ideas at, at, you know, uh, at length and also answer questions and receive all the feedback and engagement from the community, especially leaders. Uh, surprise, not, surprisingly for them, not surprisingly for us, a lot of the leaders, because of how, how engaged and well communicated they've been with the challenge, they join those sessions on their own and engage with the teams in long discussions that sometimes went for over an hour, uh, which was definitely a, a, a positive that they translated into some really good outcomes that I'm gonna talk about, it, I'll talk about later. Uh, now I'll let Jessica talk about some of the communications that we did. So in order to properly advertise the innovation challenge, we leveraged a variety of communication channels. Um, it's very important to know the culture of your organization, but ACF really respects the word of our deputy per, uh, principal deputy secretary, Jeff Hilt. And ACF staff are more likely to participate when Jeff is involved in your events and your activities, which Augusto will talk a bit more about in a minute. Uh, but we were able to utilize both ACF and Jeff's push for innovation to get leadership involved in the challenge, as you can see here with his ACF wide send outs. Next slide. So 
So utilizing our ACF sponsored channels, such as our internal website, ACF Connect, we are able to lean into our partnerships with ACF's digital service team and communications team for support. The digital service team was able to post uh, like a slider advertisement on our homepage. They shared articles with updates throughout the challenge, and they even hold recordings of Innovation Day in the Innovation Summit to this day. And our communications team helped us with other agency-wide communications. Next slide. We utilize the IdeaScale platform to send out campaign messages. Um, our communications team required scheduling out mass send outs in advance. So when we had anything come up or we felt that we wanted to extend communications that hadn't been priorly scheduled, we were able to shift our strategy as needed by using IdeaScale to send out these messages and kind of bridge that gap. Next slide. And it was for things like this. Um, this is a screenshot from our Idea Jam. Since the Innovation Challenge was going on during our holiday season, a lot of people were out of office. It was difficult for us to gain buy-in and really get attention. And we were able to shift our strategy to include events to boost staff buy-in like the Idea Jam. Um, this event was put in to boost engagement and fill teams for ideas that remain near the end of idea submission that were just kind of looking for a few members. We really highlighted ideas that were missing maybe like one member, and we went from scraping up 10 ideas to fill up our spots with the University of Maryland to taking a full 24 teams to panel voting and ending up taking, I believe, 12 to the challenge. Back to you, Augusto. Thank you, Jessica. So now I'm going to talk about how we gain leadership uh, interest organically. As I mentioned before, one big concern that participants had was that from the 2022 pilot was that they felt that not a lot of people paid attention, not a lot of people showed interest, and especially leaders are not necessarily engaged with the challenge or, or paid attention to the challenge. To address that, we, we kind of like, uh, first we decided that the ideas were not gonna be just open to any type of idea, but we're gonna be ideas that would align with the mission of the agency, especially uh, so we define those three goals, but the three, I'm sorry, the three themes for the challenge, but those three themes were not decided by us. They were decided by us. And we also in involved uh, senior staff at the agency level to define what those uh, those three themes were going to be. So now that they've been part of that process, they immediately became interested in seeing, okay, so I want to see what happens with those three themes that are we selected and how many people are and so they would go to the platform and they would kind of periodically check on how, how many submissions have been made and what, what theme was kind of getting the most traction. Next, we continue to get them involved by inviting them to become part of a panel of judges. And that panel of judges would determine what were the most, uh, the, the ideas that would move onto the accelerator. So almost like winning the big prize to be part of that, uh, of that experience. So now they don't only decided the themes of the challenge, they decided the, the teams, the teams that would go into the accelerator. So now they were absolutely embedded into the process and very eager to see what happens with those ideas. So that's why at the end of the of the accelerator period, and when it was time for the um, the agency to to, to the teams to present, they themselves uh, follow the communications, paid attention to the to the messages and the and the invitations, and they attended on their own. We did not extend single, you know, special invitations to anybody, uh, except for the Deputy Assistant uh, Secretary Hill, but everybody else uh, came and you will know, uh, uh, we were so happily surprised by the amount of interest and the, the, uh, the, 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 the amount of senior staff members that attended those uh, Innovation Summit days that I mentioned earlier, which were the opportunities to not just listen to the presentations uh, in the extended version of those, but actually engage with the teams and ask questions. And when they showed up for those and they stayed after to talk to the teams and show interest in their ideas, that was like a, the biggest win of the entire challenge. So they they were super involved and they were, we, there was nothing that we had to do in particular to, but, but just kind of like involve them in the process from the beginning and they became stakeholders automatically. And then post challenge, they heard most of the ideas, if not all of them, and they were very interested in talking to them if they could, 
or help them co or connect them with other leaders at ICF that maybe have not attended the sessions, but they're like, hey, I think this idea could be beneficial for your team. I know you weren't there, but I would recommend that you talk to this team because their idea is super interesting and you should. So we basically touch every program and every leader at the AC, at NEC. So every team almost, oh, I think I would say 95% of the teams uh, got, everybody got a, at least a follow-up meeting but 95% of them are continuing with their projects after post challenge. And we'll talk about that in a second, but those were the main ways that we engage leadership and we gain uh, sort of like the buy-in and support. These are just some numbers about the 2023 challenge, which makes us super happy to see every time. Uh, there were a total of 30 ideas submitted, which is an increment of 20% compared to the previous year. Uh, then 13 ideas moved onto the accelerator. Uh, 10 offices across ACF were represented in the teams. That's another huge win because we wanted to foster collaboration and, in, and, and, and cross, cross communication across offices. So this allowed for different mem for members of different teams across ACF from different regions and different time zones to collaborate and work together on, on, on shared problems. That was amazing to see. This is the number that makes us the happiest I feel is the 94% of participants uh, express that they're they feel confident in applying the human centered design skills that they learned during the challenge. Remember, as I mentioned at the beginning, this was ultimately a learning experience for ACF. ACF wanted to make sure that people learn human centered design as much as they wanna promote the ideas and, and, the, and, the, and all the challenge experience, the learning of human centered design is a key goal as a way to spread innovation across ACF. And the fact that 94% of our participants say that they feel very confident apply, about applying the skills that led to the challenge makes us super happy. Another huge, huge win for us was the number of attendees. We got almost 700 attendees across all of our events uh, during that week which for an event that is not mandatory or that is not being hugely or, or, or doesn't in, uh, involve senior staff, like, you know, uh, sponsorship, so to speak, like the leaders are gonna be there. Uh, we got, you know, terrific numbers of attendance, over a hundred per event, which is something that doesn't happen uh, very, very, uh, uh, very often at ACF, like I said, for, especially for events that are organically grown or developed. This is an event that happens from, started from an, eight, from an office, doesn't come from the top. And we were so happy to see over 700 participants join across all events that week. And finally, as I said, out of the 13 ideas that moved into the accelerator, 11 had continues to work and develop post-challenge. And now um, Jessica will show you one of them in a second, but this is, this is some of the feedback that we received from our participants in the 2023 challenge. Uh, they felt like having uh, uh, PDAS Hill open up for them, show that ACF leadership stood behind the project and what uh, we're doing is making a difference, which is true. He came, he was interested, he knew about some of the ideas, he wanted to hear specifically about some of that had picked his interest and he was, and everybody so, was very happy to see him that day come in person and spend time with the teams. Uh, this was the first experience in my government career that felt truly collaborative. A collaborative team is good quality of life. Yes, as I mentioned, this allowed for some people that were remote, that were working in different regions and different time zones to come together with other offices in different parts of the country and work on common issues and common problems to uh, solve them together or try to solve them together, as you say. And uh, finally, as a remote participant uh, in the challenge, it made me feel connected to the larger ACF culture. True. Uh, this allowed for some new staff, especially that were maybe uh, new to the agency, new to the mission or new to their office, to, to experience what it is to be part of the ACF culture, because ACF does a great job of fostering a culture of innovation and collaboration across, across the agency. So definitely for new staff, feeling that being part of the larger mission felt really uh, satisfying. So happy to hear that. And now uh, the work doesn't stop when the challenge, and as I, as I mentioned, a lot of uh, a lot of the interest in the teams or before that when we were collecting feedback was what happens after the challenge how how do my how, how do i make sure my idea continues to develop and mature so based on that participant uh you know we implemented those low, longer uh presentations on innovation uh, summit days so now they uh they were able to present those ideas uh and we provided the training with the coaching for for uh, for presentations, so they were more effective on the messaging, and they were able to get more. So uh, it, pretty much everybody got a meeting with a leader uh, at ACF to continue to 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 uh, pitch their idea and and develop it. So they're all in the process of that. Eleven of those thirteen are in the process of doing that. Uh, so now, for next year, we're going to continue in that line. 
but we're going to add more collaboration earlier in the game with the coaches. We also learned that the teams wanted to meet the coaches before uh, the boot camp, but before, you know, right at the beginning of the of the 12 week accelerator. So we're going to do that. We're going to have a session as soon as the teams are announced. We're going to pair them up with their coaches and we're going to have a meet and greet, so to speak, and connect them. So get them ready to develop that working relationship even from the beginning, not to wait until after the boot camp is over. Uh, then we're going to also change the way we instruct the uh, the instruction is conducted. Instead of having a boot camp for four days uh, at the beginning of the accelerator, we're going to split that time in shorter sessions throughout, focusing on specific things that they should be doing at any given time in those 12 weeks to allow for team members to not just, uh, it's flexible on the time, so they don't have to dedicate basically a whole week to the boot camp, but they will be able to uh, learn in different, uh, to ensure the sessions throughout the challenge, making it a little bit more flexible and more effective, I think, in the way we deliver certain concepts. Uh, and then finally, our leadership continues to push ideas forward. Like I said, we got great engagement for leader with leaders, and they are continue to push uh, for these ideas on their own. And we we are actually in the process of providing an update to the, the entire agency about what's happening. And there are going to be some really nice surprises coming out of that communication and uh, coming out in the next uh, in the next week. So so yeah. Uh, now I'm gonna uh, give it uh, pass it on to Jessica to talk about uh, something that we that we worked on during the challenge. Thanks, Augusto. Um... The Innovation Challenge allowed us to get ideas like this connected to proper leadership and for them to be able to discuss implementation of our team's projects. So here you will see an example from one of our innovation teams. This team built an artificial intelligence chatbot to make grants, uh, like applying for grants easier and more inclusive for applicants. They learned throughout the accelerator and through the human-centered design process from stakeholder research that applying for grants is too complex for many applicants, and they were able to create a chatbot that provides a 24-7 solution that is efficient, compliant, and scalable to the program needs. Uh, their idea was aimed at the theme, how may we help applicants have an easier experience applying for an ACF grant, and here is a demonstration of their chatbot in action. This is a demonstration of an artificial intelligence chatbot built for the Administration for Children and Families as part of the 2023-2024 ACF Innovation Challenge. Here I've asked it, what is its purpose? And it replies that its role is to assist grant applicants and recipients. Next, the chatbot is showing the user all of the grants it is familiar with, which includes nine from the Office of Refugee Resettlement and four from the Office on Trafficking in Persons. Our innovation team has created this using Notice of Funding Opportunities, or NOFOs, which are the formal public announcements used by the federal government to inform the public about funding. The chatbot is built on OpenAI's GPT-4, currently one of the most advanced language models. Now we will do some additional functionality testing, asking about who is eligible for the Preferred Communities Program in ORR. The chatbot goes into its knowledge, which in this case is the 2021 Preferred Communities NOFO, and gives us nine eligible categories. Finally, we wanted to show the chatbot's ability to answer a question in another language, so we ask it how much money is available per budget period for the Refugee Agricultural Partnership Program in Swahili, and it answers correctly. And that concludes the, our presentation. Now we are happy to answer any questions you may have, uh, either about the challenge or, uh, uh, yeah, any any part of the of this experience that uh, that we just went through. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Augusto and Jessica. That was fantastic. It was so interesting to learn about ACF and how you guys have been innovating. So while we wait for more questions to roll in from the audience into the Q and A. I would like to know more about what advice you would give to other government organizations who want to innovate but don't know where to start. Yeah, I would say the the just start small and the the best way I think for us was to allow for teams to the spaces for them to come together and think about problems that we are facing, right? So start with just creating a, 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 a place for people to to talk about the things that they want to want to fix and the things that they problems they're facing we found that when people started posting ideas on idea scale a lot of people 
felt excited. I'm like, that is a challenge. And they were from different regions, from different offices, from a different team. And they felt like those problems or ideas or, uh, resonated with them. So that's the start, right? You just start creating the momentum, building up on those ideas. And then you can start thinking, okay, how do we connect these folks uh, so they can start thinking and uh, provide them the space? And this is, a, 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 definitely I give it to ACF, providing the space uh, and, the, and the resources to, to, to work on these problems, right? You, you have to invest a little bit on your, on your folks, on your people, by giving them the opportunity to freely think about ideas and creatively try to solve problems, you know, creatively try, try, think of those issues that are facing and creatively think of solutions together. And I think uh, the agency has to provide the space, but it doesn't cost a lot. You just have to provide it either through a casual opportunities or more formal events that they challenge, right? Because the, it does take time and there's an investment of folks in planning and then executing the challenge and also people participating. But uh, I feel like that's something that we can, you can start smaller. You don't have to do like a super long 12 week. Maybe you can start with like a week long sort of like experience to, to, to promote, you know, promote, you know, maybe like a, start with a brown bag, start with a brown bag where people just come and bring some things and then you start capturing ideas. And then in the next one, you just say, okay, we will pick some of these and we'll start kind of all thinking about it. And then you'll start building those connections and people will start kind of, kind of coming together and thinking about them creatively. So maybe that's a way to start. Great, it's great advice. Thank you so much. And we've got some fantastic questions rolling into the Q&A here. So you mentioned that teams of staff were working on the submitted ideas. How were these teams put together and who were the participants? Uh, yeah, so the teams were, so the, when we opened the, 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 the window for, for submission, anybody at the agency, either uh, staff or contractors with permission for their, from their managers were able to, to go into the platform and submit an idea or join a team to participate. So that's how we put them together. Fortunately for us, we didn't have to set up anything. The idea scale is set up perfectly for that. You just have to enter the parameters and everybody can just come and it's seamlessly, it's seamless that they just come and, and they, 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 they look at an idea and there's the, the, the option right there, join the team, vote for the team, give kudos to the team, you know? And so yeah, simple as that. We just, people started coming to the platform, submitting their ideas, adding a description. There's all these fields you can put, make it short, super long or whatever, but then people can easily come and find ideas and as ideas uh, continue to get momentum attraction, they race to the top or they go up, right? They, they go out to the front uh, so people can find it more easily and engage with them. So yeah, it all that happened at an idea scale and it was really, really nice to see because it made our life a lot easier. Great, that's great to hear. Uh, how did you get leadership support for working on a chatbot? Some government agencies have been skeptical to get started with AI. Mm -hmm. uh, we are lucky. Also, yeah, ACF is a, is a great culture. Uh, Jessica can tell you as well. Uh, we have been at the forefront of developing standards for government uh, engagement in AI. So the AACF in general, we are in the process, aside from this chatbot that is in development, we are about to roll out an internal uh, chat, um, you know, AI, AI tool that would allow us to, 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 that will work with us. That will, you know, instead of going to chat GPT, let's say we have an internal AI platform that we could leverage to help us. So the agency definitely is conscious that we need to adopt these technologies in an ethical and responsible way because we're also sharing, you know, uh, we're handling uh, sensitive information, uh, private information. So for lucky for us, like I said, ACF is all, all for that and contributing actively to develop the standards for government. So a lot of the, the policies and, and regulations written at the government level are coming from ACF and HHS. So we're fortunate in that regard. That's great, great. And our next question here, how did you decide which ideas would be further worked on with the accelerator? Who was involved in the decision making and what was the criteria beyond your themes? Yeah, so the themes were one indicator. So people had to align their ideas with one of the three themes. Uh, but then, then we involved leadership uh, from the beginning to decide those themes and then we invited, invited them back to help us select. So we, we didn't just say, look at all these 30 ideas and pick your favorites. We actually kind of look at the most popular ones. And we also thought, thought we, we had an evaluation criteria 
which we could also implement in idea scale. So we were able to uh, select the ideas that had the most, the more, um, uh, more popular, but also the most relevant, the most, you know, uh, different, different ways. So we presented the top ideas to the leadership and they were, they, they were the final deciders, right? So we, I think we narrowed it down from the 30 ideas. We provided them with like maybe, I think 20 or less than 20, the most, most, uh, uh, I guess, robust ideas uh, and, and miso popularity and, 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 in, and interest. Uh, so they were able to actually define, and some of the ideas to, to show you the, 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 the power of the, of engaging them, some of them actually, they, they saw an idea that was not necessarily on the top that we proposed and they went and asked, I want this idea to move forward. So almost like it's sponsoring them. So I think that's that was a good way. Uh, it, proved, it, proved, it, it proved our assumption that engaging leadership uh, in a way that is very uh, organic, uh, it, it provides uh, an opportunity for them to become a stakeholder, like engage a stakeholder and the teams to kind of develop their, their ideas. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how we decided. So they decided the ideas. And like I said, we... I'm going to share something with you. We were going to pick 10, but because they couldn't get the, to, to decide on 10, they wanted 13 and we had to do 13. So it's a random number, right? 13, yeah, because they wanted 13. There were some three ideas that said, I want to see this idea. So, hey, the more the merrier. We we pushed 13 ideas because leadership wanted those ideas and didn't want to leave any of those out. So yeah, there you go. Absolutely. When you have a good idea, it's great to have that follow through. And how did you sustain authentic engagement considering that staff and teams might have competing priorities in other work? I'll let Jessica answer that. That's, just, that's, that's comms. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let her answer that one. Yeah, I feel like um, like a big part of our strategy, I mean, up front, um, we had kind of communicated that it like what the commitment was and kind of what to expect with time up front, just so people weren't shocked at the level of commitment that this required. Um, we also, because we had leadership engagement, the supervisors generally involved were all right with us taking their staff for a while, um, especially because these ideas were so central to agency priorities that it kind of meshed well with the work that they were already doing. Um, I would also say a good bit of it was just making sure that everyone was on the same page. Like the participants didn't have a skewed expectation of what they were expected to do. We didn't ask more from them than upfront what they had committed to, but we did offer opportunities that were additional. And I would say because it was, their buy-in was already there and they wanted to see the ideas go through. We saw a lot of, um, engagement in those like optional activities. Great, great. That makes sense that it's when it's all intertwined, um, everybody benefits, right? And our next question here is what idea submission has had the biggest impact on ACF? Ooh, that's that's a tough one. A lot of them are having an impact uh, immediately. I, I wanna say, uh, Jessica, you can also chime in here. I. I would say not the biggest impact, but the quickest, I think, was the one that is about to pilot. It's a, um, it's a, it's a survey to evaluate, to improve, in an effort to improve communications among internal teams. And I think that is the one that most definitely leaders got the most uh, interesting in re because they realized the team did such a great work that they, they had a pilot, a prototype, working prototype ready. And it was kind of like, wow, yeah, this thing is, is pretty much ready and they they got the they presented it well they talk about it uh in a way that was showcased how easy it would be to implement they they did all the legwork pretty much so agency said hey this is a very low risk uh sort of like easy you know very low hanging fruit so to speak to implement and that's one that i can top of top of mind it comes to you know comes to my my, my right now i said yeah this is it, it it happened fairly quickly you know government sometimes were not as quick quick to act uh, on ideas and innovation, but this one was just like, okay, it's ready. Let's let's get it to the proper channels, but it's moving forward and it should be uh, piloting very soon agency wide, which is an exciting development. That's that's one. Uh, it's a it's a survey to to evaluate communications. 
uh, the um, what is another one, Jessica? Maybe that has uh, has got some. Um, uh, I would say them. probably um, there was one that goes through public comments that I thought was really interesting and that would save a lot of like personnel time in the long run um, because a lot of the when policies and things come through they have to go back out for public comment and sometimes these public comments like thousands thousands and thousands of responses and somebody has to dig through all of those and actually look at them and respond in a way you know it has to be seen um but their team was looking at different ways to utilize ai and kind of be able to separate and cut a lot of time out of staff's daily routine so i just i think that is one of my favorite ideas that have come out sound like wonderful ideas to implement and we have someone wondering how big the acf organization is and how big your innovation team is including coaches the agency is jessica is it, are we, we two two thousand well, uh, we have 1,200 full-time staff, and then I think it's around 700 contractors. Yeah, so about 2,000 people was the total audience because, as I said, contractors are allowed to participate as long as they have management approval, right? Which opens up more to more diversity of opinions and 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 and, uh, and skills. Uh, so as you know, we work hand in hand. We're we're, we're teaming up day to day. So. It makes sense that as long as managers approve for the time, contractors can engage. So about 2,000 people in, in total is the is our intended audience. Uh, and the teams are, are are three. And we actually, we didn't mention this because it's still in the works, but we might expand it a little bit because we realized that dreams of three, sometimes things happen, you know, life happens and the teams, uh, one team member is unable to, to engage as much. So we are uh, also considering adding more members uh, throughout the challenge. So instead of staying those three and keeping them, um, so they call think about them as a as a, a starting team is three, but then along the challenge we'll be, we will be considering the option of adding maybe two other members because as you learn things in your research in your in your during the challenge you might realize we we could use an extra set of hands that has this skill set. But because of the current format of the challenge, it doesn't, it's not as simple to say, I'm going to add a member and I'm going to add a member. Uh, now you can say, yeah, you know, hey, at midpoint or at some point we can say, now I need a data analyst or I know I have a, I, have, I know somebody who's a, an AI uh, expert or someone who's doing policy for this specific type of grant and we should get them involved because it will give us, you know, uh, make the project even more strong. So yes, uh, it's three at its uh, currently is uh, three team members. Uh, one is the idea sum the submitter, the owner of the idea plus two, but maybe we'll now add a few more so the team can become more effective at, at, at working on the problem during the time that, that we provide the 12 weeks. And then we had a coach for every team. Yes, sorry. Yes, one coach per team. Mm -hmm. It's always very exciting to see innovation teams grow. And we have a request for past success stories to understand the size and scope of potential ideas. Another one, one success story I can think of from the pilot, which is something that inspired us, and it's one of my uh, a, 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 a friend now. Uh, she, they did something that that was the one of the most memorable ones. It's like they piloted the idea of simplifying notice of funding opportunities. As you know, that is a big part of what we do is to put out grants, to write grants. Uh, we call them NOFOs. And sometimes we heard, uh, we still hear, unfortunately, from the field, from our applicants, that the NOFOs ICF puts out are very complex, are very, are very, uh, they are demanding uh, to apply, to understand, so I, the idea this team had was to simplify the novel by starting looking at not just the language, which is an important piece, but also at the type of requirements that it might, that, you know, let's, let's think about the goals of this, like, let's just look at it from a holistic view. Instead of rewriting the novel, just maybe updating dates and timelines, let's update the program goals and objectives. So what are you we trying to achieve with this grant? What are we trying to to, to get where are we trying to get here right from these uh from these novel and and that team actually finished the whole project and the idea was picked up by the, by the not by, or just HHS but ACF and two different initiatives kind of uh, uh became a reality out of that idea right 
So now we're working on a simplified grants initiative at HHS and a simple uh, simplified NOFO uh, uh, at ACF. So we're now um, making our NOFOs not just more visually appealing and uh, using plain language in them. We're also making the programs rethink the requirements and making it the, actually the, the NOFOs more equitable, which is an ultimate goal for the agency is to reach some populations that historically we had not been able to reach or, or serve as much. And we will now with this new NOFO. So that's one that comes top of the, from, to, to mind when I think of, of past success projects. Fantastic. That's great to hear about. And our last question here is when you did your initial environmental needs assessment to find gaps for this program, what types of questions did you ask? Mm, the regular, we asked the regular questions since, uh, you know, we started with like, you know, why did you join the challenge? Why did you participate on this, this challenge? And uh, why, basically, what, what worked, what didn't? And and just we just took those and we started like you know co compiling like a like a like a list of ideas. But yeah, we did we kept it very simple. We just said, um, why did you join the challenge? Why motivated you? Uh, so uh, to understand kind of what are the reasons people are joining the challenge and see what can we do to address it, 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 some of those. And then find and then they said what worked and what didn't. Just keep it simple. Keep it open. Let them kind of like express and then we started then we categorized it into like communication issues visibility issue leadership engagement right so we then did all that categorizing but we kept it very broad and open for the for the uh, people to provide feedback from when we conducted those interviews and, and focus groups great well we have come to the end of our webinar today so i want to thank you so much for your time aguso and jessica it was so great to hear about how acf innovates